Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 298 for the 18th of December. So let's start off with uh, the Southern Front. You know, at the Southern Front, uh, we did not have any uh, intel of anything happening. There is some rumors of the people uh, staying in Kherson city, uh, writing to some pro-Russian source uh, complaining about their plight. Uh, where they seem to be used by for you no know, propaganda, but you no, know, they didn't really get any help or you no know, electricity and everything. You know, so yeah, something to that extent. But of course, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. Moving to the Zaporizhia line. So you no, know, this is Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia city. This is Zaporizhia, uh, oblast or region, and uh, we have uh, some information, uh, which seems to suggest the fighting is slowly. Uh, starting to flare up uh, around, along the line. Uh, we have the Ukrainian uh, attack uh, over at uh, Nost uh, this is sorry, uh, the, the thing just run off Nesterianka. So, you know, this town here, Nesterianka, is under uh, Russian control. There is a reported attack uh, by the Ukrainian 1st Battalion of the 65th uh, Mechanized Brigade uh, around 50. 50 soldiers attack uh this region so um because i didn't report there's a capture you no know, so it's quite obvious that uh the offensive did not work out and uh over at the other side uh near uh the rosianka uh there is fighting reported here at the rosianka so uh this is some attack on uh, some ukrainian uh concentration of forces around Dorezanka. So Dorezanka is uh, just south of Kuyaipo or Huyaipole. So um, this is the other uh, skirmish that happens uh, along, along the line. Over at the uh, Velika Novosilka region, so this Velika Novosilka, in the region here, there is Ukrainian offensive over at the uh, Novosilka region. Uh, it was first reported on the eight, uh, 18. Uh, on the 18th, where you no know, recon forces was spotted uh, at Novo Silka. And uh, after that, there was an uh, attempt to attack. So, you no, know, on the 18th, the, on the 18th, uh, which is yesterday, the or the day before yesterday, depends on how which day you are watching this, the Ukrainians sent recon forces, and uh, after the reconnaissance, they sent an offensive. So, this is what happened at Novo Silka. Uh, the Russians, uh, there is fighting reported at Vremivka where the Russians intercepted uh, a Ukrainian repair and re uh, evacuation group. So, you know, there are some forces that are supposed to, uh, on the Ukrainian side, supposed to retreat, uh, maybe carrying injured people and some broken uh, equipments, you know, and they got intercepted or destroyed by the Russian forces. Uh, along the line, there is a reinforcement reported over at Zarishne. Uh, Shavono Kretnisia as well as at Svikove. So you no know, from strategic map uh, strategically you can see that uh, it's coming to the all the different uh, front lines. One one coming to the Kayamske region, the other one is Orek Kiev region, this one is at the Huaipo region. So uh, reinforcement um, continue to be pushed to Zaporizhia might be the no, it might be something, it might be nothing, no. It could be the Ukrainians wanted to launch a massive offensive. Maybe it's not just to show up defenses. Uh, moving to the uh, Donetsk front. So, you no, know, this is Donetsk region. And at the Donetsk front, uh, there is a uh, fighting reporter at Shechenko. Uh, according to the uh, Russian Defense uh, Ministry, they say that uh, they attack a concentration of Ukrainian forces near the town of Shechenko. And... Uh, over near Voleda, uh, at Mikulski, there is a uh, recon forces being uh, contacted at Mikulski. Uh, at Vilodo Mirivka, the Ukrainians were launching a uh, uh, recon, and then uh, they were then reportedly trying to attack. Similar to the situation at Vremivka, uh, so far no news that this was successful. At uh, Novo Mi uh, Novo Mihailivka, there is reports of Russian attack. Uh, at Novo Mihailivka. However, um, the majority of the fighting is actually by the Ukrainians on the 18th and on the 19th. 19th is actually today. This is actually today's report. And uh, over at Boyeda, uh, so we are now on the western side of Dunia City. At Boyeda, the, the Ukrainians have captured uh, this area here. 
in the southeastern part of Bojeda. So you know this is north, this north, south. So this region, this region here is actually controlled by uh, the Ukrainian forces. They have captured this area here, and according to Suriat maps, uh, they are in, uh, in their mapping. This area here is also under Ukrainian control now. Uh, the Ukrainians actually counter attack and captured this area. Uh, my mapping currently is more akin to the one that is drawn by Ryba. So uh, tentatively, I'm going for the more conservative one, and uh, the. However, there is fighting reported by the Rus uh, Ukrainian Defense Ministry that the Russians did launch an attack on, on Buyeda. So, you know, they, they attack, but they actually lose the front line. So, very interesting. Uh, over at the Marinka region, the, the, the fighting continues to be raging over the center area. Uh, the fighting here is uh, currently stuck because there is a lot of, a lot of high-rise buildings uh, around the center of uh, Marinka. And uh, the Russian forces currently is stuck uh, with this high-rise building uh, and the most interesting uh, information coming out from Marinka was that apparently there is actually civilians in Samarinka according to the pro-Russian source Raiba they say that the clearing of the multi-story and uh, municipal buildings are complicated because uh, there are civilians uh, in the houses and basement of these buildings and I, that is actually very surprising to me because Marinka is among the most fiercely fought over uh, location uh, in Ukraine. And uh, heavy bombings and uh, artillery shelling is reported at Marinka. To still have civilians in this region is unimaginable. Uh, how are they going to get food, water and uh, to even get out of this place is uh, anyone's guess. Um, so... I'm not sure how accurate is this information. It might be wrong uh, because ultimately this is coming from the pro-Russian source and they are saying that the Ukrainian forces is using the civilians as a, as some kind of shield or barrier, which I do not... I, I have a lot of doubts uh, whether this is correct because uh, why would the civilians still be in Marinka? The Marinka has been fought over for at least half a year now. So, you know, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But of course, I have to say that Earlier in the war, the front line is actually around this this hill here, uh, the, around this region. Whereas the and then over the past half a year, the the Russian forces have pushed all the way, all the way to this line here. So um, so if the civilians are staying around here with fighting, uh, just maybe you know how far is this? Uh, two kilometers away. Then they think that it's very safe to stay stay there. Then uh, yeah, they are also you know, um, uh. uh no, they should receive some award. No, they should, no Darwin award. Uh, over at the Krasnohorivka region, uh, the Russians are reportedly still fighting uh, towards uh, Krasnohorivka. Uh, no details in terms of the exact front line. And uh, moving on to the Adivka Pisky region, uh, we have no reports of fighting around this region over here. And uh, over at the New York front, at the New York region, so this is New York City, New York. Uh, the Russians have a different name for it. I uh, forgot the name. I tentatively forgot the name. Anyway, uh, there is fighting reported at Oleksandropil according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, we are not sure who is actually in control of Oleksandropil. So, uh, so, you know, this is entire grey area along with Novo Bakhmutivka. So, uh, just take it with a pinch of salt. You know. And then moving up to the Bakhmut front. So, this so now we are so this is new uh ukraine uh, we are now here at the bakhmut front uh fighting is reported on the western side of ozerianivka uh, with uh, both sides claiming that they are actually fighting uh in around this region uh deep state ua say that the fighting is in the north of uh in the northern part of uh ozerianivka probably around this region here and i think that might be a mix-up between uh, fighting at Ozerenivka and fighting at Kudyomivka. We are not so sure uh, how to make of it, which is why uh, I did not map it into the map. Uh, but Deep State UA did mention the fighting is around this region here. And uh, there is fighting reported at Andrivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, at the Klishevka region, uh, the, there is fighting reported uh, by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry that the Russians are attacking with the uh, Russian Defense Ministry saying that the Ukrainians tried to counter-attack and did not work out. Um, so, and there, there, 
uh, deep state you uh, not deep state sorry Surya maps actually reported that uh this region here uh has been captured by the russian forces so there is this uh, railway line uh, moving up this way and uh there's this road so this is this is a uh, klishevka and this road actually goes all the way to bakhmut city and uh, russian forces have captured this area and thus captured the road around here according to their information they said that uh this is a hill uh over the hill northeast of klishevka so you no, know, I was looking for the hill, but it doesn't look very hillish to me. If you look at this, um, it doesn't look you no. Know, uh, how to say? It? It's actually part of the hill. The hill actually reached to here, and uh, if you, as you can see, the hill is actually uh, more towards the on the western side of this railway rather than on the eastern side. So it's more like the Klishevka is actually you know situated uh, uh just off the hill. Uh, the hill is actually the farmland and and uh so you know i the information that is on the hill is a bit weird and also that uh this is also very interesting that you can see that the russians are attacking uh, towards klishevka and uh klishevka is actually in uh klishevka is actually in the valley uh it's in the valley so uh and then on the opposite side you no know, there is actually a ukrainian entrenchment if we if we go actually go over here you can see the starship uh entrenchment and uh, it's actually right on the edge of the hill, overlooking the entire town of Klishevka. And in fact, if you look from their direct, from their perspective, you can actually see quite far. Actually, you can see the Russian uh, slowly pushing towards Klishevka, and uh, you can even probably see some of the fighting uh, uh, over at Andreevka. And and in fact, if you go from the direction of Andreevka, uh, if you look from Andreevka. You can see the valley and then you can see the opposite hill which is actually where the entrenchment is there's an, another entrenchment around here and uh so uh the ukrainians do have a very uh uh strategic spot with this uh uh entrenchment this heavy entrenchment that is pre-war built uh so protecting this entire region so it does shows that uh it might not be so easy for the russians to take uh this town uh given that the the Ukrainians will have fire control over this entire territory around here. Yeah, I just thought this might be interesting to you guys, which is why I'm using Google Map uh, for today's report. And uh, over, uh, sorry, Google Earth for this report. Uh, at Opine, the rumors is now that the Russians for Russian forces have captured 80% uh, of Opine, or Opine, uh, just south of ba uh, Bakhmut. Uh, however, the on both sides, the report are uh, actually clashing. Uh, they are still saying each other is the one attacking. Over at the Bakhmut city itself, uh, there's fighting reported on the eastern side. Uh, we still we don't have any other information about the fighting at Bakhmut. Some footages has appeared uh, in this. You know the perspective looks like this, and uh, there is fighting around here already, and uh, there is armored vehicles moving around here. So you know very messy, and it's just a few street of fight. It's just these few streets uh, that is currently uh, being fought over. Uh, very interesting how the war you no know, so we always say it's a big war but the fight is always very uh at a very low level you know we are talking about like no more than 100 people against 100 people at any any uh battlefront so it's very weird uh over at the northern part of uh, there is fighting reported at Pihorodne. according to the russian defense ministry they claim that the ukrainians tried a counter offensive over at Pihorodne. however the ukrainians actually claims that the russians are attacking so you no know, uh, see who you want to believe uh, so you no know, at least we important thing is that we still know that Bihorodne is still under uh, still being fought over so you know uh, so the the my hypothesis of a pincer is still you know alive and uh, oh there is reinforcement reported at the uh, Shafsif here uh, 300 this time around this reinforcement is quite uh, substantial 300 people has been has arrived here from the Kherson region so the Ukrainian forces, uh, according to all these intel's, continue to be uh, streaming forces away from Kherson to reinforce the Bakhmut front. So uh, if you are pro-Russian, then the demilitarization is definitely you know, working out uh, pretty well, sending the Ukrainians to a more, uh, more of a meat grinder kind of uh, location because Kherson uh, has been really hard for the Ru Russians to fight in uh, because the territory is too huge. Uh, sending them to the Bakhmut, you know, makes killing much more easier. Uh, but if you are pro-Ukrainian, uh, 
this is actually you know a great opportunity for the Ukrainians to actually reinforce but reinforce the line uh with additional manpower but you must also you know do keep a thought that the fact that the ukrainians need to send reinforcement from the Kherson region to the bakhmut region to reinforce might suggest that there is a lack of troops uh on the ukrainian side to actually hold the front uh if not if not then why do you redeploy those forces uh, if you have had enough uh, forces to fight around here so you know this is you know it's a double double sword uh kind of thing uh you can think in both ways uh, over at the soledad region uh there is reinforcement uh of english speaking mercenaries uh to soledad region and uh there is fighting reported at bakmuske according to the ukrainian defense ministry uh we do not have much intel around this region uh for yakolivka we finally have the russian defense ministry announcement so uh now we have an official statement from the russian defense ministry that yakolevka has been captured by the russian forces according to the russian defense ministry they said that uh, the town is currently being cleared of the randoms of ukrainian troops so um it will be quite surprising because uh they have been doing uh, clearing up operations since the seventh uh since the last the first time that we heard uh, the settlement is being cleared and then uh, the, we we on DPA we actually announced the capture on the 16th and on the 18th uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry they are still clearing up so I'm not sure if they are clearing up uh, soldiers that are alive or just clearing up uh, parts of the soldiers moving to the Severs front at the Severs front uh, the fighting as Vesele Vimka uh, was not repeated uh, no idea what's the situation over at Spurne uh, however, the Russians are still pushing at the Kham Okanyamsky, you know, towards the Sivas direction. And uh, over at Bilohorivka, the Russian forces is still trying to capture this town of the river, of Sivisky Donetsk River. Moving to the Crimea front, uh, there is fighting uh, reported uh, towards Crimea by recon forces. And then uh, there is reports of uh, shelling uh, today. This report is reported today by the Russian Defense Ministry that uh, concentration of forces within the forest has been hit by Russian artillery. And over at Dibrova, we have information of fighting uh, by the courtesy of uh, Anna Dogareva. Uh, they, she reported that there is uh, forces attacking at Dibro Dibrova, but uh, did not work out. Uh, in today's report by the Russian Defense Ministry, they say that there is artillery uh, shelling concentration of Ukrainian forces in this region. Not sure if these two reports uh, from separate sources are related to each other. It could be. It could be related because according to Anna Delgareva, they said that the the recon, uh, uh, the enemy that tried to attack the village was uh pushed back due to reconnaissance by the Russian side and artillery. So um, so it might be related, might be related. Uh, further up north at the Crimea front, uh, we have a Russian attack on the Ukrainian position of Shevino Popivka. And uh, the further up north, there is uh, reports of fighting uh, or rather, you know, recon forces of the Ukrainian forces moving towards uh, Holokove around here in the direction of Holikove. But um, they, they got uh, stopped and toted, uh so-called hampered or you know they, they, they tie them up into the hamper and uh you know this christmas is coming so maybe you know yeah they need to give some presents and uh fighting is reported at makivka according to the ukrainian defense ministry the russians are attacking in this direction over at the sviatove front at the sviatove front uh there is fighting reported at rozivka uh the ukrainians uh recon forces was was spotted around at Andreevka and uh, the town name is called Rozivka in Russian so which is why there is the discrepancy in terms of the names and uh, there is fighting reported uh, towards Stemakivka according to the uh, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry uh, it's a bit hard to click the correct icon uh, uh, yeah this one this one this one yeah the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported the fighting towards Stemakivka the Russian Defense Ministry actually reported that uh, they have shelled uh, Ukrainian positions around the Makivka region on the 18th and on the 19th. And um, so uh, Stem Stemakivka continued to be very heavily fought over. And uh, 
then the shelling continues over at Nova Selivsky, as well as in the Kopians front uh, over at Ivanivka around here, just north of Kotlyarivka or Kaislivka. And uh, at Kaislivka, uh, there is uh, Ukrainian forces getting uh, taken out by uh, fire damage, uh, which I just read it as an attack by the Russian forces at near Kaislivka. Uh, moving towards uh, the near Kupian city, those is Kupian city. Uh, around this region, we do not have any information of fighting. Uh, the last reports of anything was shelling at Petropolivka in the, our last report. And uh, at Vorishne and Vorishna region, so this is Vorishna, this is Vorishne, this is Vorishne, Vorishna. Uh, this region uh, went quiet again. I thought the fighting would be. Uh, flare up uh, much fiercer here uh, however it seems like it's a nothing burger you know so don't buy nothing burger buy hamburger you no know, i think it's more taste tasty so anyway this is the summary for the day of uh 298 for the 18th of december and and uh, please subscribe if you have not subscribed and uh the person of the year will be uh the the final vote count will be in a few hours time and uh, i'll see you in the next update.